from Chemnitz. And to celebrate the fact that we hit 100% funding on the Dye Pot Weekly Kickstarter campaign, I thought that we would have some fun and dye some yarn with some Gatorade. I picked these two flavors of Gatorade today because they had the most saturated color on the shelf at the supermarket. Um, today we're going to use green apple and I guess this is great even though the color is really a deep blue more than a purple. So the the blue, the the grape Gatorade has blue number one and red number 40 in it and the the green has yellow number five and blue number one. I've never dyed yarn with Gatorade before, but hopefully we'll get some really bright, fun colors. And to add another twist, I thought that I would take the yarn and dip dye it into these two flavors. But sort of after the first dip dye, I will rotate the gradient to then dye it in the second batch of Gatorade. And I think that we can get some really kind of cool yarn out of this. Today I am using Bare Stroll Fingering, which is 100 grams of yarn. It is a superwash yarn, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So just like Kool-Aid, Gatorade has citric acid in it. So there should be sufficient acid in this drink itself uh, to help us dye the yarn. I am curious, however, exactly how much food coloring there is and how saturated uh, the color we get in our yarn. So I'm just pouring the whole bottle of each color into a separate pot and turning on the heat to bring them to a simmer. Um, each of these bottles is 32 fluid ounces. It looks like green apple is our winner as we are starting to bubble. So I am going to reduce the heat and get ready to start dip dyeing. I pre-soaked the yarn that we're going to use today for uh, about two hours, but 20 to 30 minutes is usually sufficient to saturate the fibers. And I have um, squeezed out most of the water so it is damp but not dripping. And I also have a pair of tongs on hand to assist as needed. Ooh, that's like a nice lime green. It's a bit yellower than I had expected. And so already, wow, already we're seeing a nice green gradient. It's helpful to have some kind of tongs or um, wow that color came up I better get the rest of this in that color came up really fast um, <laughs> a lot faster than I was expecting wow there not may not be any color left for that bit at the end <laughs> Wow, I think, I don't think I've seen green dye exhaust that quickly in a while, especially compared to our experiments um, with some of the Easter egg dye tablets recently where it took a really long time. Um, I am very amused. Um, let me pull this back out, but yeah, that water is clear. All of the green is in the yarn. Um, let me put this in the bowl real quick so you can see. Um, we have, it went so fast that I've got white at the end, um, but we do have a nice gradient. It didn't um, absorb super evenly, but I think that's okay. Wow, I am so surprised that's clear. Um, I'm actually going to let this cool off for a second before I do the second dip dyeing because I want to be able to remove a little more of the water. So I'll be back. The yarn has cooled enough so I could remove some of the excess liquid and show you the gradient before I move on to dip dyeing in the blue Gatorade. Um, 
The color is really, really pretty. I'm still surprised how quickly uh, the color struck. So we've got this beautiful gradient, and one way certainly we could do dip dye into this second color is by starting maybe with the lightest end and going to the darkest end, but I actually kind of want to rotate this 90 degrees. So the darkest and lightest ends are actually next to one another, and at either end we've got the medium, the more medium tones. So I am going to dip dye starting with this end, so that way we get more, a little more variation with this, in this gradient. We are at just below a simmer, so I am going to start dipping using our, can I get the whole thing in frame almost? You know, so I've just rotated the skein 90 degrees from where it was before. And already you can see that we're getting some really cool um, coloration on here, but I'm dip dyeing pretty quickly because I know, yeah, the colors are already cooling pretty fast. So, uh, let's get it all in. Let's get it all in. Eek, eek, eek. It's got a little color all over. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> And I'm going to reduce the heat um, because I don't want this to simmer too much, even though we are using um, a super wash, a super wash yarn. But this is super pretty. All right, let's check, check and see. Yep, that water is clear. I'm gonna turn off the heat and remove this yarn, oh cool, into our bowl. And once this is cooled, before we get ready to wash it, um, I'll come and show you the, I'll show you the, the gradient that we got with the order that we dipped it, but this is a cool, cool yarn. So our yarn is now cool to the touch, and this right here is the edge that went into the dye bath, bath last. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of lay it out down here so we can see it. It's not quite cool enough to to, to walk, rinse yet, but I just wanted to take a look before our final reveal. Yeah, so I think that this gradient is pretty fun because we added more blue um, in this direction, but the green, we had the least amount of green right here with the blue. So I look forward to seeing what this looks like completely dry. I'm ready to wash some fiber with just some liquid dish soap and cool water. And I'm not worried about any dye coming out right now because the I am confident that the dye is, has absorbed to the fiber. And I think that the reason why the dye absorbs so quickly is that there really isn't that much dye in the Kool-Aid as compared to when I use, say, um, all of the dye tablets in an Easter egg kit or something. But it's good to know that if you are going to be using drink mixes that are at their intended concentration versus super concentrated, like I do sometimes with Kool-Aid, um, it's just good to keep in mind. But anyway, I'm going to rinse this until, well, the water's already clear, but I will go through a couple rinses to remove the soap. And then, ah, I think I'm gonna do one more step before we go dry the yarn. Since I just tried using the salad spinner on roving this morning, I thought it'd be fun to use it on some yarn. And see if we can remove a little more water. I had already squeezed out a bunch of water. But if I can get it dry faster, 
that will be pretty handy. So, okay, the fiber looks pretty good. And wow, that's actually way more water than I expected. Um, interesting. All right, I will definitely need to explore. Whoop. <laughs> I will definitely need to explore bring, making the salad spinner more of a permanent guest um, in my dyeing process. The yarn that we got from the Gatorade is so pretty. I love how vibrant and electric this green feels at the dark, darkest part. And then at the same time, how almost muted the blue feels. I mean, I know that this must mean that the green food coloring was more potent than the blue. But the color, this color over here is just striking and almost like a slate blue versus a neon or electric blue. So I'm really excited by that. It was a lot of fun to dip dye the yarn starting with one end and then rotating it 90 degrees to start dip dyeing with the other. And I think that the resulting yarn is just absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me to dye yarn with Gatorade. If you like the Chemnitz yarn dyeing videos, please check out the Dye Pot Weekly Kickstarter campaign, where you can contribute to support the materials and equipment needed for more exciting dyeing videos. Thank you so much for all of your support. Happy dyeing!